Harley. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good, thanks. So, Coco, welcome back to Rome. How are you feeling at the tournament here? Yeah, I'm really happy to be back here in Rome. It's a great city, and i um, just happy to be back at this tournament and hopefully have a good one. Any questions? Welcome to Rome, Coco. Um, okay. Just what has been the primary thing that you've been focusing on in the prep ahead of Rome on, the, like, the practice court? Yeah, uh, definitely in, improving the serve, and, uh, you know, in the short time, I feel like it has improved, and... Um, other than that, just kind of continuing to build on how I was playing in Madrid. I felt like off the ground I was um, playing pretty well, so I think just continuing to build on that and, and make the right decisions. You mentioned Madrid. I was just wondering what your take on the final there was in Madrid. Um, I actually only saw the tiebreaker. The, you're talking about the final Madrid, so I, I, yeah, I actually only saw the tiebreaker um, and the level was like really good from the, the tiebreaker. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't see the whole match, so I can't speak much on it. Just wanted to, another question, Onika, she's obviously one of the favorites here and forward to the French Open. What's it like playing against her when she gets that momentum? Like she wins so many sets, six love, six one. Like how does that feel being on the other side of the net? Um, I mean, I think when you're playing her, you, you shouldn't, worry about her results in the previous matches because every day is a new match and a new opportunity and I, I think if you play her thinking about you know you know her results then you probably lost the match so I, I think for me I just approach like every match with a, a clean slate and I think it's even more important when you're do playing against somebody um, who has done well in the past just because you don't want that to affect how you play. How hard is that to do to try and put that all out of your mind? For me personally, not that hard, uh, just because I, I feel like in the past with the way my career has went, I played a lot of big names early, so I think I just got used to separating the name from the, I guess, the match. Um, so for me personally, it's not that difficult to, for that, but obviously, you know, playing Iga herself is difficult, but I guess that aspect doesn't affect me when I'm playing her. Just looking ahead a bit, I'm just wondering what importance you place on the Olympics and how do you place that in terms of the, of the Grand Slams <clears throat> and how difficult was it missing Tokyo? I didn't understand like the first part of the, the mic. The what part. importance do you place on the Olympics? Oh, okay. And um, where do you place that in terms of the Grand Slams this season? Um, I mean, for me, I, the Olympics is definitely a, a top priority. I mean, I would say equal to the Grand Slams. I wouldn't put it above or below just because I've never played before. It's my first time, and, you know, I always obviously want to do well and, um, and you know, try to get a medal. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'll, but the prep is going to be interesting because I've never done the, uh, the grass to clay transition before. So... Um, yeah, but I'm, I'm not putting too much pressure on it because it's, I really want to, you know, and fully indulge in the experience and it's, you know, hopefully I can have the experience multiple times in my lifetime, but I'll treat it as a once in a lifetime experience. And how difficult was it to Tokyo? It was for the first like day or so because it was like out of my control, but you know, the players made me feel better because they said that with the COVID it wasn't the same. So. I did feel better. I don't know if they were trying to make me feel better about missing it or they were being truthful. Hi, Coco. A question about challenges, which I know you've seen. Yeah. What did you feel were the most plausible and implausible bits of the film? And what do you think of it becoming such a pop culture moment for tennis? Yeah, I thought that it was a, a great movie. I enjoyed the, the romance <laughs> and the the thruffle situation and I had the very unique characters and I thought the tennis was done, you know, pretty well. Was it a hundred percent perfect? No, but like that's every sporting movie. But I really think that the actors themselves did a good job. I was expecting it to be not as well done just because of looking at their interviews, they were pretty much downplaying it a lot, but I thought overall they did a, a great job. And I think that for me, the MVP definitely goes to like the people who designed the set. I felt like that was the most accurate when it came to like 
the signage and the logos and all of that, and then obviously the acting was incredible, and the story was also pretty, pretty good. And I think the more you deep dive into the movie, the more you like you, I guess, m more enjoyable the movie becomes. Have I? Sorry. Have you met people like those characters? Like those those okay. actors? Yeah. Like the characters. Oh well, I don't know any thruples going on on tour, so <laughs> <laughs> I mean. There probably are some, but I'm not in it. I'm not Tashi Duncan, and I don't know any Tashi Duncans. Um, but I did like relate to her mentality on the court, <laughs> not everything going on off the court. I did relate to that of just like um, that, and then also like there was a part in the movie, and I like told my boyfriend is this. I was like, thank God you don't play tennis because like. I, she's right, I wouldn't not want to date like a scrub on tour. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that part, that's the only relatable part I have about Tashi Duncan, but everything else, she's like not a good, not a, a nice character <laughs> to how she treated her husband. I'm, I'm, I'm writing a piece about ranking, um, and I'm curious, just particularly, what, like players say that they're focused more on like trying to develop as players and not looking at their rankings. I'm curious, when you first come on the tour, how easy or difficult is that to do? And is it like easy to attach how, how you feel you're developing to what the number is next to your name? For me personally, ranking has never been like a, a thing for me. Like I just never would look at, or even if I did look, I wouldn't care. Um, I will say like maybe like towards the end of the year, you're looking at the live ranking to see if you make the WTA finals. But um, yeah, for me, it's more about like titles and um, you know, for sure, if you play bad in a couple weeks of, in a row, it does make you feel bad about yourself. But, like, I'm, I've never been a player to attach, you know, to the ranking. I think it's just uh, I want to do well in tournaments, and, you know, the ranking comes with that. But uh, I know it is difficult for some people to, especially um, just when, you know, when their ranking moves a lot, especially when you're on the cusp of, like, getting into Maine and qualities, I think that's a, a bit more of a difficult situation than maybe when you're, like, top 20 and you know you're going to get into everything. And, Coco, just in terms of this week and getting ready, getting your game shored up for Roland Garros and everything, um, what, what for you will make you happy leaving Rome? Uh, I think for me it's just playing or serving better than I did last week, honestly. Um, because I feel like the other parts of my game are very improving in the right direction, and I feel like uh, that's the part, if I can, you know, work that through, I think it would be very, very, uh, set me up for a very good rolling girls. Um, but other than that, yeah, I, I think I'm returning well. I think I'm hitting off the ground well. So I think for me it's just that if I can get that part, you know, well, I, I think I can do well. And also I think uh, last week, you know, even though I lost, like, I lost mm, six, four and a third, um, and like 14 double faults, so this is like four or five games, so I feel like if, you know, I'm still close in these matches against these against Maddie, who's like a top player, um, and I think I just fixed that detail, save me, and maybe those matches would turn into winning in straight sets instead of losing in, in three sets. Quick question about Rafa Nadal coming up to the end of his career, specifically his last tournament at the time at the French Open. How do you assess his legacy, specifically at that tournament? Just so unbelievable. Yeah, it's um, honestly it's very weird for me as a fan to come to terms with, just because majority of my life he's been the Rolling Garros winner, um, and. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's now hitting. I think I was like in Madrid, it didn't really hit that he was retiring yet. But now when I saw them do the little ceremony after, I was like, well, like this is, you know, real life. This is for real. Um, and I kind of like, I feel a little bit sad about it because he's definitely one of the, my favorite players to watch and his mentality and his intensity is something that I admire. And honestly, he's like one of the, probably the only player that I've ever like, when I practice on the court next to him would literally like, zone out of my practice to watch him and I've practiced against or not against uh, next to some incredible players on tour and I think he's just the only one that like my eye just like wanders to and no disrespect to like other players but I think it's just like something about him and his aura and like the intensity in which he does everything is just something as a me as a young player to look up to and also just the grace he shows he's a very nice person I remember last year at Roland Garros he like 
touched me in the back and said hi and good job and I didn't respond to like <laughs> like 20 till I was like already down the stairs because like I couldn't believe he like spoke to me um so I think it's just little things like that that I'll just miss seeing on tour and you know just the way he just carries himself I think is great and um and his legacy is going to be something that is um almost like unmatched when it comes to just the intensity in which he approaches everything uh, and I think that's something that the players will miss and the fans will miss.